Today, we build arguably the greatest CMF LEGO could ever release, centered around our favorite senator, Padme Amidala. I've got 12 different minifigures from outfits that LEGO have both made and need an update and not made ever. And I've put a few custom pieces from other Star Wars minifigures together to give you 12 different Padme outfits I'd love to see in a LEGO Star Wars CMF. So let's get straight into it and look at the first minifigure. First up, I'd just like to introduce you to my new minifigure display stand where I can show off the minifigures. I have added some custom bricks with my names on and you would have seen this in the BD1 review as well yesterday. But our first minifigure is of course gonna be none other than the Queen Amidala minifigure. This is Padme in her throne room gown from Naboo and we all know this minifigure by now. It's a very expensive minifigure goes for hundreds of pounds and now the official Lego version, let alone the set that she came in. It definitely needs a remake and a CMF would be a perfect time to not only revisit her, but also give her an updated dress piece. I think they could definitely get this into a three by three circle at the bottom, a little thinner. And I'd just love to see what Lego nowadays would do for Queen Amidala. Alternatively, if they wanna keep this minifigure exclusive, we could see the Senate gown of when she first arrives on Coruscant, when she's in the actual Senate. Very similar to this design, but would give us an alternate minifigure that could definitely be used in her place. And that is just minifigure one out of 12. I've built all 12 and taken a look at the second one, which is another one you would have seen around on the channel before. And it is the Handmaiden design, which is meant to look like her flame gown, which is honestly one of my favorite outfits just because of the nice ombre effect from the legs up through to the torso. And even in the hood, it just goes from a white to a yellow on the legs. Then you've got that red waistband, which is represented in the hips here. And then you've got the orange blend into the red for the hoods. I'd love to see Lego tackle this. That is Luke Skywalker's headpiece that I have used for the Handmaiden, though, of course, would probably get a... I'd love to see a few different heads so we can have a few of her handmaidens though. They're all meant to look very, very similar, if not the same. So it makes sense to only include one, especially for a Padme themed CMF. Another minifigure that Lego have given us, and this is almost keeping in with the chronological order of these CMFs, is this peasant disguise from Tatooine, where she's trying to hide the fact she is Naboo royalty. You, wouldn't tell it with her attitude when they land on the planet, but she is trying to at least fit in with her clothes. It's a minifigure Lego have made a few times. I feel like we've had this over the years in a bunch of different styles. This is the most recent one that came out five years ago for the 25th, I mean 20th anniversary of Lego Star Wars as a theme. And I think it's just a minifigure they definitely include with an updated torso and legs in a Padme CMF if we were to ever get one. And I say that because I'm pretty sure Star Wars as a theme isn't allowed any CMF series because it's similar to selling action figures, which Hasbro own the license for. So if we could get a little scene with each of these, as I've said before, that would really be great, especially if we got some of Naboo with Padme in her battle clothes from on Naboo. Again, still in the Phantom Menace here. I think we actually have about four from each of the prequel movies. I guess we've got a Clone Wars one, but more or less we have four from each of the prequel trilogy movies, which is a nice spread for a CMF. This uses Star Lord's torso and legs from the Guardians of the Galaxy. If you did want to build this one yourself and then a layer head and hair piece, though, it'd probably be better to buy Padme's if you're building this from Bricklink. And none of these really have accessories. I guess for the Battle of Naboo and a few of the other costumes here, you can include a gray pistol, this very light silver colored pistol or a similar color to that. And I'd love to see a molded pistol for a CMF, but I don't see many of these costumes needing accessories, which is why I put so much emphasis on them coming with scenes instead. Our fifth minifigure and starting the attack of the clones run is this pilot disguise from the start of the movie, of course, this doesn't look too close to the actual pilot disguise. You've got a battle scarred face, which I'd love to see dual sided because she is near an explosion. And I think there'll definitely be some cuts and bruising on her face if that was to happen in the real world. But this is from the Planet series, which I will be reviewing in a few weeks here on the channel. So stick around for that. Nothing special about the torso and legs though. Again, we definitely have some updated printing designs from Lego and it'd be a nice 
outfit to get in the CMF. This is the last custom minifigure that you would have already seen from me, but it is the dress Padme wears in her loyalist committee before she addresses the Senate which is actually only a deleted scene, so you might not even know the scene I'm talking about, but I'll put an image up on screen that is from Attack of the Clones, and you can see that Agatha's dress from the Marvel CMF does look really, really good as a custom version of this one, and it also works for a few different gowns that she wears in Senate meetings and across both Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. So we've definitely got to get some purple gown, Padme. There's so many gowns to choose from. There's even a gown when she returns to Naboo in The Phantom Menace. So her hairstyle is definitely very different to the other sighting. And the next one is a minifigure Lego have already given us, but I do not own it because we haven't got a Geonosis Padme in a long while. So all I've done is flipped Farm Boy Luke's torso around if you've been collecting LEGO Star Wars for a while, you have a ton of these farm boy looks from every single land speeder. I think we're actually due another land speeder to come out sometime, probably even next year. So keep your eye out if you don't already own one. You can see Luke's design on his back. But this works as a Geonosis Battle Padme, the outfit she wears. I'd love to get a non-torn version of it because it does look a lot nicer than the torn version, especially in Lego form. But either way, I'd love for this to come with a white gunship once the Coruscant Guard gunship retires, because I think that would also be a cool set to get. But if this was a part of a CMF, I think to wrap up Attack of the Clones, we've got to have Padme's wedding gown from right at the end of Attack of the Clones when she gets married to Anakin Skywalker. It's a very iconic dress. She has her hair down as well underneath the gown though she also comes with a hood so it'd be nice to get that jedi robe hood element in a white color or even get this moles morales style hood in white which would probably better match the outfit and if we could get some printing on not only the dress piece like we get with leia but also on that hood i don't think there's much more they could give us for this minifigure but before we move on to revenge of the sith we do have one minifigure from Star Wars The Clone Wars. I couldn't leave it out completely and it is a minifigure you've already seen in the Coruscant Guard gunship but this time with dual molded legs. Why they don't give dual molded legs to all the characters that need them in Star Wars I really don't know. These are picked up off the pick a brick wall similar to the grey ones with the black boots that they can use for the rebel troopers. Again why they don't use them for Antilles for the rebel troopers for Padme who really needs her outfit to be perfect. I have no idea, but at least there are no mistakes on this minifigure, unlike the Desert Skiff minifigures. Anyway, I have added dual molded legs, and now that we've got them on Thrawn in the Duel of the Prettier set, hopefully we would get dual molded legs on pretty much all of these minifigures in a Padme CMF, because they couldn't afford to not give us them. And at the start of Revenge of the Sith, Padme is in what is known as the Leia Buns cloak on Coruscant because of her hairstyle. Now, I haven't gone with the Leia Buns cloak because my UCS minifigures have gone missing. I don't know where I've put them, but fear not, I'll find them eventually. So they've already got the hair piece and the head from the previous Padme minifigures. All we'd need is a new cape piece to cover the minifigure and wrap around the minifigure. I think that would look cool and would work for so many other minifigures. We could get it in grey for a Last Jedi Leia outfit as well, and I'm sure there's many other costumes you can think of across other themes, not just in Star Wars, but I'd love to see that new cape element, which is why I went with this design. And now we get to the end of Revenge of the Sith. So it starts to get a little bit darker. We have the Mustafar outfit, the travel clothes of when she arrives on Mustafar to warn Anakin. This is Bespin Luke's torso, we've got the head and hair piece from a Rey Skywalker minifigure and the Mace Windu legs, which do work decent though. Again, dual molded legs are definitely a must for this minifigure. And there are a few customs that have been sold, none available at the minute, I don't think. So I'd love to see a few more customs making these different Padme Amidala costumes, but of course the best thing would be if Lego gave us a CMF with little scenes from each of the appearances of these different outfits. And last but not least, there are only actually two outfits that Padme is seen wearing after her travel clothes on Mustafar. It's the hospital gown, but I've gone with the Walter gown or the Walter Shrewd, which she wears during her funeral on Naboo. Now, 
Her gown would definitely be lighter than this black and navy we see Barris Offie wearing, but the detail on the torso of this minifigure, I'm not sure you'll be able to see it, matches so well to the gown that Padme wears, and her hair will be all over the place. I'd love to get a hairpiece similar to this Hermione hairpiece, but with flowers either printed in or even dual molded might be going out of their way a little bit. And this is Han's face from when he gets frozen in carbonite because I don't think Lego would actually give us a face of a dead person, but it would be a great one to see in mocks of that scene on Naboo, especially at Star Wars conventions when all the lights go down and you can have a fully lit Naboo with this Padme minifigure. So here are the 12 minifigures in all their glory and I think a Padme CMF would look really, really cool. So hopefully Lego can sort something out with the license of these Star Wars minifigures and we can get something like this very soon, especially if that means we can get another Queen Amidala minifigure because although I really like the replica I've got, I would love to get my hands on an official Lego version and some of these other outfits that I have custom built. Again, if you have any questions about how I put together any of these minifigures, let me know down in the comments alongside your favorite of the bunch or perhaps other minifigures and other outfits Padme wears that you would like to see in a Star Wars CMF. And I hope you enjoy. Check out all the videos on screen now. Don't forget to drop a like on this video and may the bricks be with you always.